it's Andrea Tooley. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm really excited about this interview today because I'm here with Dr. Michael Parker from Harvard. He is the um, kind of founder and the leader of HMX, which is this new really exciting education platform that I can't wait for you guys to hear about. And so Dr. Parker, thank you so much for being here and chatting with everybody today. It's going to be great. Thank you so much for having me here. Can you start by just kind of introducing yourself, your background, your training, you're an MD, kind of where, how, what was your pathway to where you are now? Okay, so I'm actually a little bit of a hybrid. So I, uh, I have a computer science background before coming to medicine. And, uh, and so I actually started out working in Silicon Valley as an engineer, so as a computer scientist, and, uh, and was just also really interested in the human body and in medicine. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I loved solving problems, but I wanted to make sure I was solving the right problems and having an impact. And uh, and so thought about going into medicine and decided to to aim in that direction and ended up going to medical school. So went to medical school with the idea of combining the computer science background and the medicine background. Okay. And uh, and combining that with teaching. Wow. So these were sort of my three loves, and uh, and so computer science, medicine, and teaching. And, uh, and so went to medical school at University of Colorado and then came out to Boston for residency. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and very early on was, uh, was very interested in creating these interactive teaching tools to help people understand difficult concepts in medicine. Wow. Yep. So, uh, so it went from there and I, uh, I basically ended up staying at Harvard mm -hmm. and, uh, and so been here for a little while and uh, working on different types of interactive teaching tools to help people visualize and understand hard concepts in medicine. Yeah. And, and then just uh, three years ago got into uh, getting HMX off the ground. That is so unique. I think, I mean, you kind of had this planned all along from the get-go. I mean, computer science, education, you had this vision for what you wanted to do. I think that's very unusual. And I feel like most people kind of, they fall into something and it kind of happens, you know, um, I think your path is unusual. I mean, I think, uh, I wouldn't say that there was a master plan perfectly, <laughs> so I don't want to make it sound that way, but I think, uh, I think, you know, all of us want to be valued for our uniqueness yeah. and, uh, and so we bring different strengths to things and, you know, and for me, I could see over time having a crude experience which things I liked, and and then I saw gaps in teaching. So I, I said, you know, we're teaching medicine, but there are so many great tools to help people really understand the concepts, and we're not using all of those. Exactly. And so that was really my motivation. That's so cool. And it's a completely different world now in terms of how people learn and the way we can learn, and medical education really hasn't changed in, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, decades. Right. So you're right. kind of bringing the revolution. I hope so. Okay, yeah. good. Well, <laughs> be, before we get into HMX and and kind of lots of things about it, can you just give a brief overview about what HMX is for people who haven't heard of it yet? Sure. So uh, HMX are online courses from Harvard Medical School and really aimed uh, at people who, I'd say three are audiences really. So these are people who are deciding Mm -hmm. on a, whether a career in medicine is right for them. Okay. So that's a, that's a big decision. It's a hard decision. Yeah. And, you know, and you want to make the right one. So that's one audience. And then there's those who are preparing to move into that next phase. Mm -hmm. So you're getting ready to go into medicine and you want to be confident in the next steps. Definitely. So that's, that's uh, it's just a time of huge anxiety. You know, yes. that transition. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The transition from before to during the training. Mm -hmm. is uh, is just such a huge thing and I remember it in myself as well and uh, and that was a real challenge and and then those who are in the early stages of their training so in medical school are trying to get a sense of you know what's what is the big picture let me not get lost in all the details I have to memorize so many things I'm faced with boards there's all these challenges and so how do I take a step back really get solid foundational concepts, understand how things fit together, mm -hmm. and see clinical applications. And so it's really those groups 
And so these are these are online courses. Some of the logistics are that, you know, genetics, immunology, biochemistry, and physiology. Yes, the hardest ones. <laughs> exactly. So that was, <laughs> the four that was, like hardest conceptual, I'd say. Yeah, I mean that was the motivation behind <laughs> this was uh, was thinking, you know, what students struggle with, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and it's interesting. So around three years ago when this started, we were going through a curriculum reform. Uh-huh. And part of the curriculum reform was that we wanted to get students into the clinic earlier. Yeah. So see how what you're learning in the classroom applies. Yeah. And part of the consequence of that was basically a shortening of the preclinical curriculum down to about 14 months. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> really, uh, Holy really, smokes. yeah, significantly shorter. And, uh, and so one of the consequences of that is that things get squeezed a little bit. Yep. And, and yep. so there's a greater burden on students prior to coming into the curriculum to oh, sure. spend, yeah, prepare right. themselves. And, uh, and so we were thinking, you know, what are those, what are those topics that students struggle with? Mm-hmm. And so came up with those four. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then how can we help people from a range of backgrounds? Because we have such a range of students. Yep. Not everybody is a biochemistry major. Not everybody is a cell biology major. And, exactly. and so, you know, we have biochemistry majors sitting next to political science majors. And, you know, they're coming at, everybody's going to end up in a good place. But how do you, how do you really help the people who, uh, who want to get up to complete speed at that point? Yeah, sure. That's, that's really a great um, kind of, idea and a way to target lots of different people and fill all these different needs. I think mm-hmm. um, I'll make sure to link all the websites and the FAQ um, pages because I know people will want to know details and we don't have to go into all the nitty gritty like each class is 10 weeks and you can get a free trial so you can see if you like it and there's all kinds of things. You get a certificate. There's some kind of grading, um, not grading, yep. but you can take a test and get some kind of standardized certificate if you do well, all those yep. kinds of things. So, I mean, this is really a validated, like this is a legit thing. And you're even having some um, schools kind of That's right. s- support this for their students. That's right. So, uh, so one of the philosophies basically behind this is that we wanted to have students on the platform basically and experiencing these courses yeah. as early as possible. Mm-hmm. So create something incredibly useful and then work with students, yep. you know, to put this out there. And so first we brought it to the incoming Harvard medical school students. Mm-hmm. So people summer before, and, okay. uh, and that's been going on now for three years. So this is oh, the nice. third, year. Nice. just now. Yep. And, uh, so just a few days ago, the incoming Harvard medical students got introduced to this, oh, you know, for this year. Yep. And, uh, and so, you know, getting that out there for them and then uh, worked with an international school, so KKU in Thailand, yeah. and uh, and then also Florida Atlantic University, again, nice. for incoming students. Awesome. Yeah. I think that that incoming time is so key because I get people asking me all the time, you know, I've been accepted to medical school, what should I do the summer before medical school starts? Mm-hmm. And my mm-hmm. philosophy has always been kind of do nothing, you know, really just kind of drain your brain so that at the beginning of the semester you're itching to learn and you're not feeling burnout because if you're laboring over an organic chemistry or biochemistry textbook all summer, then come August when you're slammed with first year of medical school, you're not going to be in the mental, you know, full 100% state. But I think this is different because Mm -hmm. these are, this is video material, which I think is more easily digestible than kind of reading over these textbooks, which is painful um, Mm -hmm. or can be when you're on your own. And it's interactive, it has clinical correlation. So I honestly, I'm thinking when I was uh, just graduating from college, if I was going into medical school, I would have been so into this and wanted to at least get some material so that I felt like I had a jump start, um, but also didn't feel drained and mentally exhausted. And there's no pressure, right? Because you don't have to get a great grade. You don't have to study. Like You can absorb as much as you want. That's right. And it's self-paced, so you can basically get out any time. And then one thing I think that is, uh, you know, 
crucial for students to figure out their own study habits yes. and separate techniques for studying. And so one of the things we've really focused on is, you know, how do you present this in a way that's really active learning? Yes, active learning. That is my thing. I talk about yeah. that all the time. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it's not... I think, you know, watching great teachers is one aspect of that, mm -hmm. but then, you know, how do you play that back? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you how do you actively elaborate on the material yourself? So right. it's not enough to just watch it. There's this uh, there's this aspect called the curse of fluency. I don't okay. know if you're familiar with this. That uh, so this is the phenomenon that basically we've all had where you're sitting and you're watching a lecture mm -hmm. and you're nodding because it makes so much sense. Oh you sure. Know, like, like, I got this, I got this, I know the mechanism, this is perfect, you know, the explanation is great, and right. then you come, you come to it later, so it feels fluent, Yes. And, and then you come to it later and you try to bring it back, Oh. And you realize, like, that's a real challenge, yes. like, it, it, you know, you need to actually recall it, mm -hmm. and you need to quiz yourself, and you need to participate in your own learning. Absolutely. And, you know, and so that's what we're really trying to bake into this. So something like the immunology course has over 300 assessment questions. Oh, I love that. So it's like you watch something and then you check in, you check your own progress on that. So you yeah. you try something out and you say, oh, you know, I did not, I didn't actually internalize. I didn't get that, yeah. So I think, so there's a lot of that. And, uh, you know, and then the other aspect I think, or a couple other aspects to emphasize would be, one is that, you know, normally you don't see things clinically applied mm -hmm. this early. So you may be learning things more in a textbook fashion. And what we've tried to do is basically bring in real patients yes, and real clinical applications and say, okay, I'm going to be a doctor. Does this material actually matter right. for treating a patient? Yes. And how does it matter? Right. So you get to actually see people thinking out loud about how they're using the material how it factors in, and it really helps, I think, motivate people to, to want to learn this material when they understand how it applies down the road. Yes, absolutely. It's more interesting, it's more enjoyable, and you remember it better. Every time absolutely. something you can attach it to a patient, you it's just so much easier to remember. So I think yep. that's key. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can absolutely see the utility of this coming into medical school. And then I think the other kind of target audience you were talking about are people who are trying to decide if whether or not they want to do medicine. And I think this would be so valuable for those non-traditional students because I get so many people who are, you know, 10 years out of college, they're in a completely different career, they're thinking about a career change, and they're trying to approach the MCAT or something just by studying the books, it seems like this insurmountable task because they haven't been in a science class in 10 years. And so mm -hmm. something like this, I think, would be a really great kind of jump start for them to go back and take their prereqs or anything. Like, I could see this being very useful for that type of group. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, you made an important point that, you know, people are aiming at getting prerequisites and everybody needs the prerequisites, yeah. but, you know, it's necessary but not sufficient for success. Right. So, so everybody comes in with that, but that's not the only thing you need to know to really get the most out of medical school. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's absolutely correct. I agree with that for sure. And then I saw, you know, you have on the website groups of students that are using it. There's high school students using it, which I think is amazing. And then even medical students. And so I think that that's great, too, because I was trying to think, well, would I have used this in medical school? And I do think that if if you're really struggling in a class, say you just hate your professor, or for some reason you just cannot connect with the format of biochemistry in your medical school or whatever, there's another option besides just reading the textbook, which I think for it, something dense like physiology or biochemistry, reading the textbook is going to be really challenging to get everything yeah. out of it. Yeah, no, and I think... Uh... I think there's also a class of people who prefer visual learning. Yes. You know, so who want to see a mechanism of action illustrated, yeah. want to see the patient, want to see an animation. And yeah. uh, and so that's one thing also we took to heart. And uh, and so we have a team of animators and illustrators and video production experts, yeah. basically, who, who inject animations and animated scenarios into all of these different pieces. So throughout the courses, and uh, and it just makes cool. it, it gives it a different flavor.
That is so, so cool. So what is your vision for this? You know, where do you see this in the future? What do you think medical education will become? These are really big questions, but where will HMX be in the future? Yeah, so the, uh, so the first step really now is that, you know, we want to get it out to a broader audience. So this summer is actually the first time it's going beyond institutions. Okay. So, so we've only done this with schools previously. Mm -hmm. And so this would really be the first time, I'd say almost the, the first time basically. So we had the group of high school students on there, yeah. but this summer is the first time anybody can apply. Okay. And, uh, and so the first step is figuring out how people use it, yeah. you know, Bring, bring it to people in the best way. So having people well supported, having questions answered, mm -hmm. figuring out what feedback is, and, uh, and, and then reacting to some of that. So how do we improve the courses? Okay. And, uh, and then expanding the courses. So figuring out ways that uh, we're tackling other subjects. Mm -hmm. So, you know, pharmacology, for example. Yeah, is, that'd be a great one. You know, it's a natural one. Yep. Yeah. You know, and thinking about other areas that uh, where we can make a unique contribution and tie some of the foundational science to the clinical applications. Yep. So that that hallmark of what we're doing, okay. and uh, and then thinking also about ways to improve learning. So, you know, how do we help students remember things as they're going through the courses? What techniques can we use? Yep. Um, some people like spaced repetition. You know, so using Anki and things like this or exactly. other. Exactly. Yeah. So how can we how can we combine things where you need to remember them with things where you need a conceptual, right. you know, overview and framework? Right. And that, and so there are great ways of doing that. Uh, also, one thing we started, which we'll expand upon, is this idea of note taking devices. Mm -hmm. So uh, so in these courses we have lesson notepads. Okay. So these are essentially like annotated study guides that let you take notes along with lessons. Perfect. So key images, key terms, and things like that. And so, what can we do better there? Mm -hmm. You know, and how can we expand? So it's not it's not not all about you know fancy technology in any way. I mean, there's very fundamental concepts of how do you take notes right. and how to help people make things stick. Yeah. So so we really want to expand the learning science. We want to expand the number of courses, mm -hmm. and we want to get these out there and you know help people use them really well. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's really tremendous what you're doing, and I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. I really can see this being very valuable to students, and um, I think I'm, I just keep trying to think how I would use it, and I really do think I would use it. It's not an inexpensive investment. It's definitely a, a, a you know, a financial investment, um, I like comparable to an MCAT course or something like yeah. that. And so I think that that might be a challenge for some students trying to figure out how they can afford it. But maybe the more you integrate with schools or things like that, it'll be more accessible. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely true. Um, you know, definitely there are uh, tuition reductions that people can apply for. Oh, good. So, so, it's, uh, so we recognize not everybody will be able to afford this. And, uh, and so we want to have, have as large a range of people as possible on, the, on there. Yeah, but I see this being along the same level as an MCAT class or something that's it's a very comparable price um, mm -hmm. or, or any other kind of other classes that you're going to take in college. These seem like they're very valuable, and uh, I'm really excited for you guys. I think it's an Thank awesome you. resource. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to leave all the information so people can find out more about HMX and check it out. And if anybody um, that's watching this video has done anything with HMX, please comment below and say what your experience has been um, or what ideas you have or anything like that. Uh, Dr. Parker, do you have anything else that you want to add or things we haven't touched on? No, I, I just think, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful what you're doing talking about the experience of, uh, you know, how you were going through medical school and now residency. I mean, Thank I think that's, a, that's an incredible resource for people. So I really appreciate getting a chance to talk to you. Thank you. It's great talking to you too. Good luck with everything. I'm sure we'll be in touch. And everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments below for Dr. Parker and me, and we'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Parker.